Hello and welcome to Kit's Photography. I'm Kit from Bremat Photography here in sunny South Australia. Welcome to my channel. Hello and welcome to the 12th episode. This time I'm going to be talking about two very different things. The first one is going to be about adapters and mounts, that's camera mounts, and the second is going to be my trip on a dolphin cruise. Now this is really exciting. There is a dolphin cruise in Adelaide, Lee's from Port Adelaide. It's $12 per adult. It's so cheap, except it used to be $2, but it's now $12 per adult. It is really, really good. You get to see dolphins, you get to see some really interesting architecture, some ships, all sorts of animals, and it's a great trip for photography. Now I did this particular shoot in a way which was using slow motion most of the time, just to produce a little bit more a little bit more excitement a little bit more attitude a bit more artistic temperament to it all but otherwise it was really good and I got some really good photographs as well which you'll see later on and most of all we got to see some dolphins now you have to wait and have a look for those firstly though I'm going to talk about camera mounts so most of you probably know by now that I'm a Nikon person through and through. And that doesn't mean that I don't own some Canon material. I do have a Canon camera. I have some Canon lenses, which are beautiful, but they are quite old now. They're looking at around the 30 to 40 years old. In fact, the lenses don't even have autofocus, but they take beautiful photographs. But otherwise, I am Nikon. Now, there is something with Nikon that's very unique in the camera world, which is that they have had the same mount for their lenses from around the 1953 mark all the way through to 2018. Now that is a really, really long time. That's 65 years essentially of using the same mount. It's called the F mount. It is a really good thing. Now that didn't change when Nikon cameras went to digital. It didn't change when Nikon cameras went to digital full frame, as in the difference between DX and FX lenses. So the only time it did change is when the new Z lenses came out. And that's obviously because Nikon wanted to be able to get more light into their sensor. But the thing that made these lenses really, really good, in versus to the mount, is that you could use any Nikon lens with any Nikon camera. And I'll show you what I mean. Here I have two Nikon cameras, D90, D850, both digital, both really good cameras. D90 is a intermediate to professional level, D850 fully professional level. Now the big difference between these two cameras is that this one is a DX sensor meaning it's not a full frame sensor. And this one here is an FX sensor, meaning it's a full size, full frame film sized sensor. Now, the thing about these is they've got the same F mount. Really good. That means you can use different lenses on the same cameras. And I'll show you what I mean. So this is a DX lens. As you can see, it has DX actually written on it. Now, let's see if it works. There we go, it works. Absolutely fantastic. Now, it may not be the best lens, but it still works. And some DX lenses are absolutely superb. Now, what's the difference between an FX lens and a DX lens? It's very, very simple. What you're looking at is the sensor size. So, on a camera like this one here, you've got a full size sensor, the same size as a piece of film. On a DX camera, you've got a smaller, a smaller sensor, which is what they used when Nikon first went digital. Now the thing about Nikon in the way that they've got the FX and the DX is that now this, this is a Sigma, beautiful, beautiful Sigma uh, FX lens. Now I'm gonna put that on my DX camera and what do you know? Let's have a look. There we go. 
Now it works absolutely fine and the reason for that is they've got the same mount. And what Nikon actually do when it comes to fixing any issues that may arise from uh, vignetting for instance with obviously a, a, a lens which is designed for a small sensor being put on a big sensor is they adapt it so that with the D850 instead of taking a full frame photograph it goes down to DX size which means instead of getting 46 megapixels you probably get around the 24 to 30 megapixels instead it's still a big really usable image essentially it's just digitally zoomed but with the with the uh, DX cameras with an FX lens you just add 1 point times the size so if you have a 50 millimeter lens you're looking at 75 millimeters instead if you're looking at a 35 millimeter lens you're looking at 50 millimeters it's that simple it's really easy stuff so it means you can use everything Nikon on everything Nikon which brings me to my next point so the next thing is adapters now obviously you have different cameras with different mounts and different adapters so I've got here, this is a Nikon to Micro Four Thirds adapter. There is nothing actually through it. There's no speed boost in it. It's just purely an adapter. Now this works absolutely fine with old fashioned lenses, like the old Nikon lenses that have the aperture ring in them. But it doesn't necessarily work so well with the G lenses, which have the aperture built into the camera, which you have to use manual, I have to use automatically. But it fits perfectly fine, and there's no issue with me knowing that every single Nikon F lens is going to fit on that. The only ones that are not going to fit essentially are the new Z lenses. So, what does that mean for other companies like Canon, for instance? Now, I have a Micro Four Thirds adapter here for Canon EF mount. Now one of the things that Canons say is that their EF mount and their EFS mounts fit each other. They're totally compatible, they have the same linking, they have the same mount. Now of course that's not actually true. So what I have here is a Canon EFS lens with my little mount here and they don't fit. Surprise, surprise. Now there are some reasons for this. So basically what the main reasons are, just putting this away, what the main reasons are is that in the back of that mount is a, is a piece of glass because it is a speed boost and obviously this little bit just here bumps into that and that is to stop somebody from putting an EFS lens, i.e. like a DX Nikon lens, onto an EF camera mount, like a FX camera mount. Now that's absolutely fine, I understand what the issue is because obviously you'd have some vignetting. That's because Canon have not included the technology like Nikon have to just make it work. So just crop it down, just crop it down, it's really easy, just crop it down automatically, there's no problem, you don't even notice it, just crop it down, it's so simple. Especially in the days of digital sensors and digital viewfinders, you wouldn't even notice, it's really really simple. So they put this on to stop you from putting that on, putting a cheap lens on an expensive camera so that you don't get vignetting. Now this is really frustrating because if I was going to use this on a micro four thirds that's a tiny tiny sensor, it's not going to make a difference, it'll be absolutely fine, I'm not going to get any vignetting. But I can't do it, I can't do it. And I think that is really really bad design because it's very easy to have the lens tell the camera that it's the right size. But this is something which Canon have been doing for a very very long time. So you may notice that Canon have a range of different lens mounts and camera mounts and all sorts of things and it seems that never the, never the twain shall meet. And this is theoretically some people say a marketing issue. So it's designed so that I'm a professional photographer, I use Canon, I've got $20,000 worth of glass and I've got a $10,000 camera, new camera comes out, I've got to chuck that glass in the bin and buy another $20,000 worth of glass. So it's a, it's a supply and demand sort of issue. Whereas with, with Nikon, 
you've got your beautiful glass from 1950 and it still works today. And it's still really, really, really high quality. But who knows? And the thing that's really frustrating is that that, that converter is fully electronic. This has stabilization in it. Now I was going to use this lens with my Blackmagic uh, Pocket Cinema 4K, but I can't because it doesn't actually fit that mount. Now I could go through and actually you know, cut this out with a saw or something like that, but I'm gonna damage the lens and I shouldn't really have to do that. And I find this really, really frustrating, which is why instead I'm just using my Nikon lenses on it instead, because I know how they work. They focus in a different direction, which is interesting. It's one of the things, the differences between Nikon and Canon is that most, most camera companies used to focus their lenses in the same direction, as in you turn and you zoom and you focus in the same direction. But Nikon have always done it the same way, but Canon and Sony and other companies, they've mixed it up a little bit. So it, it's, this one here goes in the opposite direction to any of my Nikons. But that's not necessarily a problem. But it is very frustrating that this lens will fit on a cheap camera, but not an expensive one. But an expensive lens will fit on a cheap camera. And it just seems a little bit strange to me when it's not that complicated just to put in some programming. And then everything works with everything. The other thing about this that's quite frustrating is I do have quite a few Canon lenses. However, there's an issue with that. So this is a beautiful, beautiful lens that my grandfather gave me. Absolutely beautiful for Canon lens. Now, if I grab that teleconverter, now keeping in mind, if this was Nikon, they would still fit because this lens is from the 1970s and would easily still fit any, any uh, Nikon uh, lens mount, if, if it was Nikon that is. Put it in here, nope. Totally different size, nothing to do with it, won't fit at all because it's too old and Canon have changed their lens mounts, mounts about five times since this was made. And that's fine. Yes, it's quite a small lens this way. And so obviously they're making them bigger and bigger and bigger to allow more light in it. And that's absolutely fine. That's something that's really important. That's what the Z mount's all about is getting more light in. But there's, if it's, if it's not broke, don't fix it. That's basically it. Nikon got the right idea in the 1950s and they didn't need to change it. And this is really frustrating when it comes to actually taking photographs professionally and being able to interchange them. It's very, very frustrating because what are you supposed to do? How do you use it? How do you interchange it? Can I use my Nikon lens on a Sony camera? Yes, I can. It may not be quite as good as on a, on a Nikon, but it still should work. But it also then poses the question, why not have a universal mount for everything? Why not have the same lens mount for every single camera? And obviously that's because people want, or companies that is, want you to use their lenses on their equipment, which makes total sense. But either way, I'm gonna stick with my Nikon for the moment because I know they work really well. They've got beautiful glass in them. And I know that the, the Nikon camera and the Nikon lens go together beautifully. This week I also did a photo shoot that was quite unique. Now I'm not going to show any footage from it because it was something that was very, very uh, personal as such to the people that I was photographing. And that was actually a funeral. Now one of the things that happens during the COVID-19 pandemic is people can't move around to go to funerals. So instead it's good for me. I'm getting work photographing and filming funerals so that loved ones can see them. So a funeral is a really interesting experience to photograph because it's something which is not joyful, which usually photo shoots are, but rather it's mournful and respectful. But it's something that has to be done, especially because at the moment with COVID-19, people can't actually travel and they also can't get to see their loved ones off because of the fact that restrictions are the number of people who can attend funerals. So instead, as a photographer, as a filmmaker, I can go along, make a film, take some photographs and provide them and their loved ones with something which works well for them so they can feel like they were there in spirit as such. 
But anyway, onto something more, more exciting and more joyful. Let's go and look at some dolphins. There's so much to do around Port Adelaide. So many birds and the dolphin sanctuary as well. You can see the famous lighthouse on the left there. It's a landmark for the area and a really good photographic subject. Using HDR here to film this in slow motion, with the Sony it comes up really well. Now you'll see a little bit of distortion in this photograph, that's because I'm using a 28 to 300 millimeter lens, and that causes a small amount of distortion. Birds are fun to film with film or with stills. Even a bridge can make a really good photograph. All you have to do is get the composure right. So many boats to photograph. Boats do have character and that's really important, especially the older ones like this one here. Lee. You see in the background there, that's the clipper ship from one of my other episodes. So many different colours. Container ships are great to photograph from a distance. And if you look at these cranes, they look like giant emus. There's the clipper ship again. Making the photographs black and white really gives it some character. So many container ships and ships carrying cargo like coal or concrete such as this one here. Now if you look closely can already see a dolphin. Here it comes. So it's riding the bow wave at the front of the boat here. Unfortunately, that's all we can see. And we all got an almighty fright when this happened. 
Factories produce such good photographs. And submarines.
Now the marker here can make a really good photograph. All you have to do is compose it and get the light right. Now I've done this, but I've made it black and white because I really feel that brings out the texture and it brings out the emotion in the photograph. It's actually been a very successful day on the Dolphin Cruise so far. We've seen a couple of dolphins, but not really anything up before or photograph. They've been on the bow way in front of the boat. But just, well, it's been a lovely day and it's the, the weather's beautiful. It's a really, really nice trip. 12 bucks. It's a pretty, pretty good bit of touristy fun stuff to do in Adelaide. So I, I suggest anyone come down here. You can book online, you can go in for fees, and uh, that's just to help with social distancing. And um, it's been really, really good. So, uh, yeah. Now this is a lifeboat. Have a look at how many people it has to fit. Well, thanks for joining me again on Kits Photography. I'm sorry there weren't more dolphins. Obviously the one we saw wasn't beautifully clear. It was underwater, but it did actually jump out and I did get to see it myself, but I just couldn't get my camera going in time. Now we were in a dolphin sanctuary, so not seeing the animals is actually a good thing really when it comes to nature, because what it says is that they're happy, they're living comfortably, and they don't need to come out and parade themselves around for entertainment. But I do hope you've enjoyed yourself. Please, please, please leave some comments. If you've liked it, leave a comment. If you haven't, leave a comment. Please make sure that you do like and subscribe. Click that subscribe button, and then you can get all my updates each week. And until then, I'll see you next time.